All right, everybody. Make Vanguard great again. Woo! Can we make Vanguard great again, please? So I will say, uh, Vanguard Total World Stock ETF is one of my favorite, favorite, favorites uh, ETFs. It is truly one of the best. I think when it comes down to it, you are getting the you're getting massive diversification. So let's take a quick glance at it. Um, on Robinhood, I don't. So funny thing is, I got five brokerage accounts. I don't really own the stock on ET uh, on a uh, Robinhood. In fact, I don't own this stock at all on Robinhood. I pretty much reserve other brokerages like Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade. But let's look at it through my Robinhood account just because Robinhood is a very easy to look at <clears throat> interface. Now, I did, not going to lie, I swing trade a little bit with uh, with VT. I actually sold at a profit, which is pretty hot. But yeah, when it comes down to it, I keep them, I try to keep them all on like I try to keep my ETFs a little bit separate um, from my Robinhood account because my Robinhood account's more for like hedge fund shit, hedge fund style investing, and um, what do you call it? Buy and hold of individual stocks. Now, my Charles Schwab and my um, <clears throat> TD Ameritrade is more so for uh, well, just the basics, you know, um, simply buy and hold ETFs. Whether it's S&P 500 ETF, whatever. Anyway, let's take a look at the VT though. So, the VT has a 17.11 PE ratio. It's the price over earnings, which is that's the price over earnings total of all these companies combined. It's pretty good. So, when the world is only 17 times overvalued, it's a good deal. And plus, I do like the VT as a dip buy. The Vanguard Total World Index is a fantastic buy on the dip. Um, just because if you're going to be a swing trader, like if you decide to do any swing trading bullshit or, I mean, I do swing trading occasionally, don't get me wrong. Who doesn't? <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, if you're going to swing trade, at least get into something that you know is going to withstand the test of time if all else fails. So, duh, winning. But I do think that, um, you know, I think there's a few risks to mass diversification, just a couple. Um, you know, like if a whole shit ton of companies fails, what happens then? You know, I don't think it's going to happen, but there's a few companies that definitely carry this index though, for sure. But you can see what's really nice about Robinhood is you could check like which sectors this uh, ETF is exposed to. <coughs> so like, um, here's the top 10 holdings too, which is kind of cool. So like, Let's see, 12.59% of its total assets are these companies right here. It consists of these companies. I like the visual chart, though. I think it's nice. I like the fact, I will give Robinhood props. They do try to make investing a very easy thing to understand for investors. It's great. So we got like Apple, 3.32%. We got Amazon, 1.26%. Yeah, you got the works. You got Exxon Mobil, United Health, Berkshire Hathaway, Tesla, NVIDIA, Microsoft. I think those... Companies, while I think they're good, um, I like Google the most, though, which is Alphabet, by the way. Just heads up. If you want to invest in Google, basically invest in Alphabet. Um, Berkshire Hathaway is pretty sexy. I do love I, lo I do love me some Warren Buffett, but what's nice is you <clears throat> have fairly equal weight weighted value of this e of this ETF of all these different companies. Now there's over 9,000 different holdings, which it will tell you right here. That's crazy that this came out in 2008, that this ETF was came out. But look at that number of holdings, 9,577. Incredible. Um, trying to see if there's anything else I got to add. But yeah, look at this. I mean, you can see the fluctuation charts. <clears throat> trying to scoot this up a little bit, but... Um, yeah, as you can see, goes up, goes um, for the past month. I mean, look, you don't want to look too short term. You want to go a little long term. So let's go three months. Okay. Let's go a year. Now it's been down, but that's a good opportunity. I mean, now look, I would buy V. I love buying VT on the dip in my other brokerage accounts. It's a good buy. I was, I was using Robinhood to buy it. And I thought, no, Robinhood is more for my single stocks. 
And uh, actually, I've been trying to veer away from Robinhood more than anything. I've kind of turned it into a hedge fund of sorts because I've been betting against Bitcoin pretty heavily on my Robinhood account. So I have been kind of using Robinhood as my hedge fund trading brokerage. And whereas I go into like TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab brokerage accounts and I just basically buy and hold whatever. I mean, I do have a lot of ETFs though on those, but um, it's good shit. It's good shit. <laughs> Trying to think what else we could go over. Cause I just want you to know I've got to sing from the tip of my dick. Anyway, so in the last five years, <clears throat> it's gone up 25%. 25% gain if you invested about five years ago. So it, it, it's one that definitely does go up in a way. Um, I think you should always dollar cost average, smart thing you can do, um, <clears throat> set a cycle. This is not advice by any means, just education, simple education, and that's it. Um, but the cool thing is what I like to do is I do like to dollar cost average. I do like to, you know, invest over a time frame. So when VT is doing really bad, for instance, Vanguard Total World Index, yeah, I'll buy more of my other brokerage. Cool. Um, although I do take more time investing in single stocks, single companies that I know are just good. And then I just, I have my own index in a sense of all these companies. So, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I think Robinhood's a great platform, by the way. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I don't know. It's interesting. They do things a little bit differently and they definitely have paved the way. I think that they get way too much flack for a lot of stuff. I think the, I, I think opening the IRA thing though, a little bit of a bold, weird move. I don't know. I think it's going to, might be some backlash there. I don't know. Hey, look at that. 19% of this is the technology sector, like 16% is financial services. Healthcare is like 12%. You got 11% for industrials, consumer cyclical, 10.98%. You know, 7.10%. Communications. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Hold on. Hmm. Whoa. Real estate, energy, basic materials, utilities, you name it. <clears throat> yeah, Vanguard Dole World Index. Look at that. At one point, it was at $76.80 for their 52-week low. That, see, that's why dollar cost averaging is so important. Because if you kept investing like every week or every two weeks or something, very frequently, you could have bought a lot of VT at $76.80. I mean... Best time to buy a, a great thing, like a great ETF, a great amount of companies, because you're getting so much exposure to so many companies. It's insane. And I wish people could really see the benefit of this. There's a lot of benefits. There really are. Anyway, thank you guys so much for taking the time, as always, and have an incredible rest of the day.